Hey everyone, in the news this week, Joe Biden fell off a bicycle. You can tell it's a slow news week when that makes the news headlines every few years. Some might remember when George W. Bush fell off a bike as well, although at least it made a change from him falling off the wagon. Either way, the stumbling mess was a perfect metaphor for an administration that seemingly decided to use the 50th anniversary of Watergate to remind Americans about how great the likes of Richard Nixon or even Jimmy Carter were in compared to who they get to vote for these days. In Britain, it looks like there's going to be a summer dominated by strike action on the railways after 13 different companies voted to stay at home and join the weather and the barbecue. Maybe something about salaries too, who knows. For everyone else, it's simply a case of waiting until a government minister or possibly a union leader makes a joke about there being, quote, light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I remember one time I thought I saw light at the end of the tunnel, but it was just someone with a torch coming to bring me more work. Also in the news, the World Health Organization wants to rename monkeypox on the basis that the name is racist, supposedly towards people in Africa. And that is astonishingly quite racist in itself. It's also pretty ignorant. You know, the last time I checked, monkeys were mostly found in Asia. Other things found in Asia include badly run bioweapons labs and members of the Chinese government handing out suitcases of money if you work for the World Health Organization. In royal news, Prince William turns 40 in a couple of days and the tabloids are of course filled to the brim with stories about him and whether 40 is the new 30 and all him and Harry don't get on, as if we didn't know that already. One story I saw decided to show this relationship metaphorically with a picture of Harry playing polo and falling off his horse. You know, I don't really blame him though, it must be pretty difficult to ride a horse and stay balanced when you've got that massive chip in your shoulder. And in other royal news, Prince Charles is going to be off on a trip to visit Rwanda. This was originally intended for him to discuss climate change, but it will of course be overshadowed by the issue of migrant deportations. Although the two stories are very closely interlinked, you know, migrants from Africa, given their credit, do tend to favour the zero carbon transport option of making a boat out of some tarpaulin and some empty water drums, just like when I was in the Boy Scouts. When it comes to these migrant deportations, the European Court of Human Rights recently pointed out to Boris that they can overrule him on everything, despite him being an elected Prime Minister and then being some bureaucrats from a foreign country, one of them actually from Russia by the way. But foreigners running the country well, that's pretty much the same way that Nicholas Sturgeon's viewed things for years. You know, the whole court decision might be a good thing in the end. You'll give the impetus to finally remove the UK from that nonsense. Given the Julian Assange decision, it's clear that human rights and justice don't really have any impact anyway when it comes to UK decision making. Ugh, how depressing. Let's close with a joke. Never forget where you came from, because that's probably where you left your phone. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.